tonight on Hotel Hell in Northern California near Sacramento, a 200-year-old hotel. This is the actual bed that President Grant slept in. Is about to become history. Look at the mold on that. Three buddies decided to buy the business. It's like, don't run, don't run, don't list. Are you guys really the fucking owners? It's story. But they're so busy drinking. Were you drunk? Yes. Drink three for me! Dancing. They really like to get lap dances. Lap dance. And having fun at the hotel and the guests. Can we ask you to check in for the room? Are neglected. If I don't do something soon, the town will lose its most important historic building to a bunch of frat boys. Surrounded by the stunning vineyards of the Sierra Nevada foothills is Murphy's, California, a picturesque destination for wine enthusiasts and tourists. This historic town has been home to Murphy's Hotel for over 150 years. The hotel has an illustrious history. Presidents and legends have come to stay in this national landmark. Partners Brian, Kevin and Joel bought the business nine months ago. I own the hotel with my two partners. I run the dining room. I'm the dining room manager. Kevin, he's our bar manager, and Joel, he's our chef. Wonderful, thank you. But it's no one's job to look after the hotel. It's historic, but I think it needs to be maintenance. The historic rooms, I wouldn't even stay in them, and I get a discount. That's air conditioning. That's in. Behind the historic main building, there are 20 so-called modern bedrooms. The modern rooms are maybe modern in the 60s. These are modern? It kind of looks like my grandma's room. It smells like it, too. Sadly, the owners are too busy drinking in the bar to notice the state of the hotel. Oh, man. Owning a bar at 32 years old can be just a great party seven days a week. Give us some tongue, Maddie, some tongue. What are you ladies out doing tonight? What do you think we're doing? Kevin and I, we love women, and it is a passion, and we have a lot of them coming through here. Don't act like you've never done it. And they're not just all young. We got the Cougar clans coming through here. We are not one to discriminate. We take customer service to the next level. Cheers, boys and girls. Put them up. You know, as a California American male, we were taught during college that uh, it's good. Bin drinking is fun. Why is everybody empty? And I am the fun captain. <laughs> she tried to roofie me. You see that? I am kind of the party guy. I want to make everyone have fun. Right now, they're just kind of drunk idiots. If you're after a drunken lap dance, you've come to the right place. If you want a good night's sleep, you best go elsewhere. I'm exhausted, and I keep hearing these loud noises outside. These people are drunk, and it's driving me crazy, and I'm going to go complain. What can I do for you? I have a room upstairs. Sure. It's really noisy. The saloon is always first, and then the hotel just seems like an afterthought. This registered national landmark has been run ragged by the owners and is hemorrhaging money. If the guys continue to party and not take things seriously, the hotel's just going to close down. If I don't do something fast, this place won't last another 150 days, let alone years. I think Gordon is going to say, fuck this place, that they're screwed. I'm on my way to Murphy's in Northern California. Now, this place is in amongst some of the most stunning vineyards anywhere in the world. What a beautiful town. Look how busy this place is as well. Littered with stunning little tasting rooms. Now, anyone lucky enough to be running a small hotel here should be sold out every night. If they're not, they must be doing something seriously wrong. Historic. Murphy's Hotel has been placed in the National Register of Historic Places. Nice. Wow. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? So, first name is? Kanitha. Kanitha. Nice Gorgeous to meet name. you. Is it always that busy out there? Um, we usually do get pretty busy on the weekends. Incredible. Um, we have about 16 tasting rooms just within walking distance of the hotel. I love how historic this place is, but have you not updated the furniture since 1850? 
Bloody hell. My God, it's like going to your grandma's funeral, my God. <laughs> there definitely is a difference between historic and then tacky and old. What we have is definitely tacky. Looks like someone's died in those chairs. So you've been here for a long time? About a year and a half. And what's wrong with the place? Um, well, management, the owners. The hotel is owned by three guys. They're in their early 30s. There's Kevin, Joel, and Brian. And they really like to use the hotel as their playground, okay. um, partying, drinking, giving lap dances to the bar patrons. So, uh, so we just, uh, there's lap dance. Lap dances while they're bartending. The owners, if they continue partying and giving lap dances in the bar and acting how they've been, the place is just gonna keep going downhill. We put you in the presidential Ulysses S. Grant room. This is the actual bed that President Grant slept in, except for the mattress. We did get rid of that. What's the glass box for? Um, this is our display room. Display room? Yes, so guests and customers can come up and take a look. When were these last um, replaced? Dreadful. Um, oh, shit. I can't really tell you that. Uh, it sounds like I'm in a museum. So am I a guest or an exhibit? You're a guest. Darling, darling, what are those people doing? Yes. Come on through, everybody. Take a look inside. Close the door, Emma. Close the door. Okay, we're going to be on display today. It's usual for the tours to come through sometimes, and if a guest checks in and they just for some reason forget to close their door, they're going to have people crowded around looking at them. They literally come over and they, hello, how are you? Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's like a goldfish bowl in here. Ladies, thank God I wasn't in my underpants. <laughs> Is that normal? They just come and have a look around? Um, yeah. You know, um, we normally get complaints, right. and there's really no one that handles that or takes care of it. But there's three owners. Yes, a lot of the time they're busy bartending or drinking. Or lap or dancing. Or lap dancing, exactly. This is insane. Unfortunately. OK, I'm going to unpack. Can this uh, room be off the tour for a while? We'll see what we can do. Thank you. You're welcome. First impressions. I mean, it may be steeped in history, but it smells like the room's steeped in piss. We put you in the presidential Ulysses S. Grant room. I've just arrived at Murphy's Hotel near Sacramento, California. It's like I'm in a museum. We're going to be on display today. Hello. Thank God I wasn't in my underpants. Time for a bite to eat. I hope the food here is less stale than my bedroom. Ah, uh, Murphy's a star for ten, probably a month. Oh, he looks a happy bunny. Oh, hello. How are you? Party of one? Party of one. Okay. Uh, not a party for one. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. I'm Brian. Is that the same? Congratulations. <laughs> Employee of the month. Um, Thank you. Do you get a bonus? Do you get a night stay? No, do you get a free um, dinner? I, I'm one of the only employees that never made the cut yet. I see. You just put yourself in, and what are the owners going to say about that? I'm one of them. I'm Brian. Stop yes. it. Yes. Come on. Hey, the other owners got their shot on there. You're the owner and you made yourself employee of the month. Yeah. Are you the man with the G-string? The G-string? Receptionist tell me, do you do lap dancing? Oh, no, that would probably be Kevin. Oh, I see. I don't know. My booty's a little too big to do the right. lap dancing. OK, then. I was going to say, I can't wait to see that one. Um, I'd love to meet the other two, the chef and the lap dancer. Are they around? Are they... You want me to bring them out? Yeah. All right, Kevin and Joel and I, we're all equal shareholders in this business, but it was my plan to buy the hotel. Hello. Kevin. Kevin, Gordon, good to see you, buddy. Nice and this is? Hi, Gordon and Joel. Joel, so you're the lap dancer. There might have been some lap dancers. Oh, okay, they're right. Okay, I'm, just, yeah. just, I'm dying to find I mean, out. I'm not, a, I'm not a professional. <laughs> Maybe once in a while, but. Okay, fine. I'm a wild one when I start drinking. I get a little stripper action going on, or they get a little rowdy, and can be the most fun that any young adult could ever dream of. So obviously the chef. Yes. Restaurant manager. And the lap dancer. Bar manager. Bar manager. So who's in charge? All three of us. No such thing. Mm. So who runs the hotel? Who's in charge of the, the hotel? Hotel manager job doesn't really entail much. With three owners, normally there's one that takes the reins and two other silent. Uh, none of you sound and look like an owner. Well, Gordon thinks we don't look like owners. But what, what's the owner look like? We bought the hotel nine months ago. Right, and you guys go back a long way? Just kind of met each other 15 years ago. And I'm confused whether it's the Three Musketeers or the Three Stooges. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick bite to eat. It's been a, a long journey. 
Well, I'm excited to taste the food. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice pleasure. Thank you. Gordon's going to love our food. Joel works really hard at everything he puts out. Everything that comes out the window is a great product. I can't believe this hotel is owned by three guys uh, with a pink dining room. Pink's the new black. Well, it's like a girl's bedroom. Ghastly, ghastly. Um, any specials on today? We had a fresh Alaskan halibut mm -hmm. with a... Now that I'm talking to you, I've, I've completely forgotten. No, we had we had the halibut with a. Well, this is the first time I forget specials. Don't worry. Why don't you check with the chef? All right, I will. You are the restaurant manager, right? Yes, and I was a server too. Restaurant manager, employee of the month, and owner. Yes, all of the above. Employee of the month. I'm going to take that plaque back. Can't even remember the specials. Hey, Joel, I forgot the specials just now. Ryan just kind of forgot our specials. I have seen him do that before. The special is available tonight, the macadamia encrusted halibut. Right, well, let's try the escargot. Entrees, the lamb shank, and then what's the calamari door? What does door mean? It's a doré, it's just a calamari steak. Oh, I'll go for that as well. OK. Thank you, I'll keep all of the menu. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Once Gordon has a bite of Joel's food, Order in. it's going to put a smile on his face, guaranteed. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go, sir. <laughs> escargot in a red wine garlic sauce. Red wine garlic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jeez. Absolutely rancid. Have a little taste. I mean, nothing's hot. Uh, yeah, strange taste. You know, that's the first, actually, the first time in the history that I've eaten uh, escargot. Oh, really? And um, I'm going to say that I, I don't like it in any way. No. The escargot tasted like a dirty, funky, disgusting flip-flop. If you uh, sauteed a flip-flop, I think that would be a good good way of describing it. That was fucking disgusting. I, I want to run home and get some mouthwash for sure, but well, I don't know. Do don't... whatever you need to do. All right. Yeah, because they stink. You want ice water for you? Mm, please. Do you have any um, little samples of like wine flights, anything regional? We have talked about that, but we have not implemented it. So you've been talking about it for nine months, but you haven't actually done it yet. No one's even bothered the sort of wine flights or trying to get it together. So. so you've had this place almost a year, and you haven't implemented something that this town thrives on. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you tasted those escargot? I mean, the escargot? Not really. Have you, have you eaten? I mean, you eat here, right? Not very often. Right. Uh, when was the last time you guys sat down and had dinner in the restaurant? Never sat down with all three of us together. Strange, strange. I'm getting slightly nervous that nothing actually gets done here. Anyway, I'm living in hope. I have some more bread. For sure. Uh, I got the lamb shank coming right out, bro. Oh, my God. Look at that. Holy crap. What is that? This is our lamb shank. That's a weird-looking lamb shank. Visually, it looks like the biggest plate of puke. I've never personally had lamb shank ever been here. I do not like lamb. You're the restaurant manager. You don't like lamb, don't eat escargot. I'm the, yeah, I'm the restaurant manager, but I'm not, I'm not the chef. Wow. I think I would just call that a dog's dinner. What a mess. I do apologize again. <clears throat> I'm totally embarrassed that our food is this quality. I've always thought it was better. Hey, Joel. Yeah. The lamb shank. He mentioned that the vegetable gravy goo was a little, little too much. Oh, OK. I'm going to run this out. OK. So fine dining, frozen, inedible, nasty, excrement. I mean, I, I'm amazed. What's this one? This is the calamari doré steak. That's not garlic in there again, is it? There is garlic in there again. Jeez. It's just how that dish is prepared. Everything's just laced with garlic. Please. Be my guest. I, 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 this, what, what is it trying to be? A sponge. I'm embarrassed. I'm chewing on it, going, I just want to spit this shit out right now. Like, this is terrible. So that's the first bite I've ever taken of that. You know this stuff's on the menu, right? You're aware of it. This is your hotel, yes? Yes, I'm not correct. being punked here that you guys are the owners. We are the owners. The owners haven't sent their sons in to take the hit. No. No, this, you definitely this, are the owners. This is us. OK. How do these three stooges qualify to run an historic hotel like this? If they can't even get the food and wine right, how are they going to improve the hotel? I feel like I'm being looked after by college kids. Do they want me to come out? Or... Probably be good, yeah, come on out. Sorry, we weren't very impressed. Uh, no, I mean, far from impressed. Have you ever actually stood back and looked at that lamb shank as a dish and 
It's the most horrendous, the most drabby, disgusting looking fucking lamb shank. Have you given up? No. No. No way, we just started. We're not giving up yet. You just started? Yeah. Have you ever just walked in from outside, checked in, went up to the rooms, and no. you've never done that? Never have. Have you ever done that? No, sir. Have you ever done that? I have not. Oh, my God. What have you improved on since you bought it, truthfully? I make people laugh and smile every day. Seriously? What have you changed? Weekends, we serve breakfast all day. What have you changed, um, menu-wise? Menu, um, um... Fucking hell. Um, I got one, two, three. Three idiots that haven't changed anything. You don't stay here, you don't eat together, you don't criticize the food. Shit reception, shit room, shit food, and three clueless owners. Owners? My fucking ass. I'm staying at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California. And after being put on display for gawking tourists... Hello, everybody. Hello. ...and eating an atrocious lunch... I think I would just call that a dog's dinner. What a mess. I need to see the three nitwit owners in action. Word has got out that I'm in Murphy's and the hotel and restaurant are full of people. I feel sorry for all of them. Joel is running the kitchen. Chickens are burned. Chickens burned. Kevin is getting busy in the bar, and Brian is overseeing the dining room. It should be gear, nice gear, cheese. Gear, yeah. isn't it? Gear, cheese. Gear. Gear. I mean. So guests trying to check in are left to fend for themselves. We ask you to check in for the room. Is um, everything okay? Uh, yeah, we're waiting. We went up to the front desk and there's nobody there, so we're trying to check in for hotel. The, uh, it's one of the owners nearby. I guess I just arrived to check in. You get Brian urgently or Kevin. What, what about it? About a guest checking in. Oh, guest checking? I can As, do that too. Yeah. Would you, please? I'm sorry. Excuse Thank me. You. you should have to come looking for us in the bar. So that's what happens when guests come in late. They go to the bar looking for... Yes, that is uh, how we do it. Have you ever done that? Checked in and then found the reception closed and went into the bar looking for key? No. no, no I've, I've actually only stayed at hotels probably only a matter of 20 times in my whole entire life. Wow, and you're a hotel owner? Yeah. So how come you guys don't have anybody up here? We got the bartenders or servers like me sometimes taking care of it. Wow. Just sign the top there, please. Once guests get to the rooms, they're in for another unpleasant surprise. <laughs> Let's wait for the drunkards to go home before we open that up. Have a good night. It's very noisy in there from the bar in the street. The owner's ignorance is evident in everything I've seen so far. I'm curious to see what it's like in the parts I haven't seen, like the walk in fridge. What the fuck that is? Oof. Raw pork, cooked chicken, sat next to each other. Fucking disgusting. I wish I'd seen this before I had my lunch. Yeah. Fine dining. It's not. Look at that. Fucking. Look at the mold growing on there. Oh, you dirty fuckers. Bloody hell. There's mold all up the sides too. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at the fucking mold on that. This is absolutely disgusting. <coughs> Bollocks. Wow, fucking hell. So the walk-in, how often is that fridge cleaned out? Uh, twice regularly. a week. Twice a week? Yes. Marked, Marked bars, everything bars. out? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Come with me, all of you. All right. Especially the owners. Sounds good. Sounds good. Really fucking hell. Oh, that was an hour. Oh, wow. Man. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Fucking moldy tortillas. There should not be fucking any moldy fucking food. It's fucking horrible. And when was this made? Last Saturday. No, I need it. Just I smell that. Need to toss it. I know that. And this terrible. You should be fucking ashamed. Thanks. Okay. okay. No, it's not okay. What is that? It's to be uh, black mold. What's it supposed to be? 
Thai chili marinade. Thai chili marinade. But I don't know if it's been used in a while. The sauces was from a chef that had been there like in 2006 or seven or something. This is exactly the same way as you run this fucking hotel. You don't give a shit. Well, I give a shit. I give a shit. If I... this is your dream of running a hotel, then how about manning up and look like fucking owners? We, we are. This is fucking unacceptable, and it's not going to happen anymore. Have you checked out? Because you should do no, the other thing. Say to these two, fuck it. I'm he has out. not checked out. He's Can a, you let him talk? I have Sorry. not checked out, and I obviously I need to pay more attention and do better at my job. How any of you can run a fucking business? Do you ever see three CEOs, three fucking no. general managers, no. three fucking executive chefs? Huh? It's like dumb run, dumb run, dumb it! Since my arrival at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California, you should be fucking ashamed. I've been appalled by the three clueless owners. It's like dumb run, dumb run, dumb it! Are you guys really the fucking owners? True story. Fuck off! Unbelievable. I mean, three young idiots that are playing at running a hotel, and not one of them have got a fucking clue. I'm mad at Joel. I'm a fucking owner. I don't fucking want to clean. I've been here 12 hours. It's unacceptable. I do want to prove Gordon Ramsay wrong about me being a fucking idiot, fucking dumb and dumber, fucking scoundrel, wanker, fucking whatever British fucking terminology that fucking wanker has to say across from the fucking different pond guy. But I do respect him. I'm gonna get a drink. But sorry, I, I need to wind down, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go play poker in Reno later tonight, and I'm not going to sleep. Listen to that fucking music. How on earth is anyone gonna ever get to sleep in this hotel? Jesus Christ. That's crazy. You know what? Frog's ass is for everyone in this building right here, right now. This, this doesn't make sense. Anyone in here? Fucking frog's ass. Unreal. There's got to be a quieter room somewhere. Surely to Christ. Here we go. Hey, I, I have a walk-in to clean. I've been here. I want to go get that cleaning because it's number one right now. Is this a, this is a joke? Is this a joke? Yeah. They're partying, and I'm upset, and uh, we're just, I don't know, they're partying. Yeah. What's happened to your shirt? Is it yeah. Yeah. I'm just asking. They, they wanted to see it, and uh, I was upset earlier, and I'm upset at Joel. I'm upset at everything that's going on, and I want, this is, I'm just upset. How about how about thinking for two minutes about your guests? Well, I, I want to go clean the walk-in. I'm going to go clean the walk-in. Go walk go walk walk you just walk off like that. Hey, you I, know what? I'm going to go clean the walk-in. Okay, because you know why? Why are you acting like that, a fucking jerk? Because I'm, I'm upset. That was fucking unacceptable on there. That was unacceptable. The fucking walk-in with the fucking black mold. So why don't you do something about it? I, hey, I was... I, if I... If, if everyone in this... They just walk off like that. Hey, you hey. know what? I'm gonna go clean the walk. -in. Okay, good. You know why? Why are you acting like yeah. a fucking jerk? Brian is coming undone and is drinking on the job. I'm done trying to get through to him today. I'm, I'm upset. That was fucking unacceptable on there. It was unacceptable. The fucking walk -in. Okay. You're drunk. Go home. All right. I'm gonna go clean the walk-in now too. 
I'm gonna do it in a t-shirt. Jesus Christ. I've been told the hotel offers modern rooms further from the bar, so I've asked to be put in one so I can get away from all this madness. It's not exactly quiet out here either. And they call these modern rooms? It looks like my grandma's house from the 1950s. Look at this wallpaper, hideous. And what sort of hotel is this when you can't get a good night's sleep? <laughs> This was supposed to be quieter down here. <laughs> what an awful night's nice sleep. <laughs> Fucking shower is hideous. Water's freezing. Place sinks. Oh, no. My ass. This place is such a mess. From the awful decor to the dreadful food to the drunken partying all night long. I need to get the whole team together and find out how it's gotten into this state. Morning, guys. Good morning. morning. Let's uh, go downstairs, have a meeting. Sounds good. Yeah, with a team. Cool. Man, that was a bad night's sleep. The noise above here was insane. I came back downstairs last night, uh, and Brian's ripping his shirt up, shouting, screaming about, hey, shots are all on me. Is that normal? Is that really how these managers operate? When they're off duty, they come behind the bar, turn up the jukebox when I've already turned it down, pour themselves drinks. It's their personal frat house. How does that make you feel? Your employees are concerned that you're drunk in the bar. When do I treat you all fucking badly? What? Yeah, when it comes to scheduling, how many days that you guys have asked off for that you didn't get off? It's not what I'm asking. If you're gonna run a hotel, it's not about having a fucking party. It's about levels of discipline. Well, just so you know, it's not happening anymore, but I'm not gonna be as happy sometimes for you guys. You are as good as your team. They represent you. And based on what I've seen, I don't think you represent them properly. Okay, you go first and tell these owners what they need to hear. We lose a lot of reservations when we don't have somebody to answer the phone. You know, when we leave the front desk, we put the phone in the bar. After 8 p.m., we are the front desk, we are the bartenders. I saw that last night. Yeah. They don't answer the phone because no. they don't hear it. We need online booking. You know what that takes away, online bookings? As the front desk girls, you know. We've talked about getting rid of the front desk and putting a computer there. And we don't have a person there. Self-check-in. So fine. how do you feel about that? So they complain you threaten to fire them. No. Yep. No, that's not what it is. No. Yes, it is. We, we, yes, yes, it is. You just listening. totally attacked me. I'm afraid to express my feelings. I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. Really? Nobody's threatened here with their job. Nobody has You been. never threatened me by being fired? I have before. Were you drunk? Yes. You were drunk. Mm -hmm. So. That's the message I'm trying to get through to your thick skulls. You're threatening staff whilst inebriated. This is crazy. People who deserve to be fired are these three standing here. There's no structure. Somebody needs to step up and run the business and everybody else follows suit. You need one general manager. That's the issue. You need to be a leader from the top. That's one person. There can be 25 owners, but there needs to be one general manager. If something doesn't change, you guys are going to lose this place. OK, which one of you is capable of stepping up and running this business? I'm at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California. You're the owner and you made yourself the employee of the month. Yeah. The place is a mess because these three owners behave like frat boys. Cheers, boys and girls! And none of them is a leader. You checked out! So the staff don't know which way to turn. I'm afraid to express my feelings. I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. Things have got to change. There needs to be one general manager. Somebody needs to take charge. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to run the business. I'm our leader. Out of us three, it's going to be me, guaranteed. If you're going to run the hotel, you got it. You run the hotel. Yeah, 100%. So, Kevin and Joel, are you willing to give him the support and the autonomy to actually run this place? Yes. Yes. Brian, it's your responsibility now to general manage and absolutely toe the line. Gotcha. But there are three rules. Rule number one, to stop drinking on the floor. Gotcha. Rule number two, you have to stop working the floor. Yep. And rule number three, you have to fucking grow some.
Mm -hmm. Fast. Mm -hmm. Brian does know the most out of the three of them. So I really do think if he could stop his party in ways, he could really do it. Trust me, if you don't grow up now, you never will. I got it. It's a hotel, not a frat house. I'm not going to be drinking, and uh, I'm going to be an owner. Thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to change. I'm going to be more of an owner and not a friend slash co-worker. And they're going to see a, a different Brian. The future of this historic national landmark is now in Brian's hands. And I need to know that he cares enough to be responsible. You are young, ambitious, mm -hmm. slightly naive. Mm -hmm. You're going at it in totally the wrong way. You're on the verge of losing this business. Hopefully not. And how would you feel if you lost the business? It would be horrible. It would be horrible, because that's already three years of 60-hour uh, weeks. It's horrible. I'm here to help. But I want you to understand the mess you're in. It's not good. All right. Do you understand? I do. Deep down inside, there's no two ways about it. You're a fun guy. You've got a lot to offer. Yeah. But just stop being irresponsible. I will. And just man up. Yeah, for sure. And you can do it. OK. I want to make this work. Mm -hmm. From today on, it's going to be a, a change business. It's different. All right? OK. OK. <laughs> Couldn't see that smile back in your face. Thank you. I'll see you later. From this day forward, I'm a change man. And the business is going to reflect all those changes. With Brian ready to take charge as general manager, my design team has worked all night to modernize Murphy's Hotel. And now, it's time to reveal the new look hotel to Brian and his team. Brian, how are you, sir? Gordon, good. How are you doing? You look very smart. You good? You doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good to see you. Smart. Ladies, how are we? Doing great. Yeah? Yes, doing really good. Excited. Good. Right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the new and improved Murphy's Historic Hotel. Are you ready? Ready. Yes. 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 All right. Let's, Let's go, guys. Let's do this. <sighs> Welcome to your new lobby. All right. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> no way. This is awesome. Oh, exactly oh, how it should oh, be. Yeah. When I first walked in, I was disappointed. It was just like a big anticlimax. Now you have a nice, warm, oh, modern feel the minute you walk in. But your guests will arrive and feel welcomed. Yeah. Take a seat. Oh. Is it beautiful? Yes. Amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. Brian, what do you think? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Welcoming. Awesome. The colors, oh the contrast, the oh, warmth. Perfect. What Gordon has done with the lobby is beautiful. Now that blue, it's so warm. It's so welcoming. It's awesome. This is a historic hotel. Your ex-president stayed here. Yes. That doesn't happen that often in hotels. Thank you, you happy? very much. Good. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're yeah, here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gordon. Thank, thank you, Rob. Hold on. Thank you. There's more. Well, there's more. more. From 6 o'clock this morning, you're now live with online bookings. Yeah. You don't go anywhere near the bar. You know what time they're coming. And you are now in the 21st century. Yeah. Are you ready to see the presidential suite? Oh. Yeah? Yeah. All right, President. Come and see my room. Let's go. All right. I think you'll love it. Let's go. Jump in. Oh, my gosh. Now. Wow. It is awesome. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. It's our awesome. president. Yes. <laughs> this one's been freshened up. This one's been spruced up. You need that vibrance. The minute you walk into a room, you want to feel, wow, I'm stepping into history, but I also want some comfort. Yeah. This is fit for a president. Our president now could stay here. Obama would be, be OK to stay here now. <laughs> it still feels historic, but it's a bedroom, not a museum. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, make sure that when your guests are checked in, their bedrooms are off the tour. Did you put a new uh, robes? Is there something on here to make it softer? No, it's all been lined and cushioned. Oh, and yes. oh it's my gosh. It's yeah, it's it's it. For me, the big problem wasn't the linens, it was the noise. We've come up with yes. a solution to narrow that yeah. down. Last call, Good. midnight. Mm -hmm. Well, stick to those times of your bar closing, because the damage you can do to your reputation is devastating. Yep. We're going to follow through and make sure that our customers in the hotel are as happy as our customers in the bar and our customers in the restaurant. <laughs> right, you ready to see the rooms that outside that you told me were modern? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me show you what modern is. You ready? Yeah. I love this oh. one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I love no. this one. Oh, no way. way. Oh, look at the color. Oh, look at this. You can see why I got upset. The owner's done nothing in nine months. We've done all this in fucking 24 hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm blown away. I can't believe the, the creativity that's been put into this place in the last few days. John, what do you think? Very, oh, lost words, inspired, you know, very inspiring, you know. Listen, you should never, ever 
ever Amazing. be afraid of change. You've got yeah. to keep on going. Oh, no, yeah, I got it. Every time. Yeah. Brian, what do you think? What's going through your mind? I've never heard you so quiet. Breathtaking, though. I don't Breath even know what to say because it's beautiful. It's is this something? Beautiful. This is perfect. With this kick in the ass, we're going to go forward, full throttle, we're going to make changes that no one's ever seen before. You ready to see the dining room? Yes. Yes, yes. This one yes. I love. The dining room is yes. awesome. Yes. Where, do you, where do you stop, buddy? <laughs> Look at the colors. Come oh in. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Where's the pink? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Gone are those horrendous pink walls. A stunning, beautiful color on the walls that just pop. And there's one more thing. This bit you're going to love. It's a surprise that's going to completely change your business. You ready for this? Yes. 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 I've just revealed the stunning new improvements to the historic Murphy's Hotel. Oh Our president now could stay here. And now there's one more addition that will ensure this hotel thrives in the future. You are in the heart of some of the most sought after wineries anywhere in the world. And there's a massive market that you have been missing out on. And here's why. Every famous winery has a lovely tasting room on this main street. At five o'clock, they close. Here, you're now going to pick up that business. This is a menu designed to pair with great local wines. Oh, wow. Look at this. OK. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. Oh, my gosh. Start off with that lovely cheese plate. The chicken liver crostini paired with a stunning chilled rosé. And then this wonderful local, local ricotta dip. You now have a perfect menu. When those tasting rooms close at 5 o'clock, you pick it up and you continue it. And where are they going to stay the night? Yeah. That's right. After dinner, I want you to dig in um, and sample. The wine tasting menu is awesome. The overall experience to any guest that walks through our door now, I believe, is going to be better than ever. I like the pairing of the bruschetta and the, the wine that it goes with. It's a very nice, fresh dish. There's no going back. No. So you're only going up now. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, this is so phenomenal. This is going to put us on the map, off the charts, reservations, off the hook. Thank you, Chef. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. As well as a wine pairing menu, I've changed the entire menu in the dining room. Let me show you one of my favorite dishes. I'm very excited about the new menu. I know where I'm eating every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Fresh baked lemon meringue pie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. And the real inspiration behind this was Brian's hair. <laughs> This new menu is going to touch a business, a clientele that we've never had at the Murphy's Hotel. And I know personally, I can't wait to eat there more often. With warm and fresh rooms and the new wine tasting menu, my only concern is whether Brian can stay focused on the guest experience. Uh, listen, every night from now on in, in this hotel is a big night, let me tell you. Uh, and it's not just about the bar, it's about the restaurant and the rooms. Push those tasting menus. In that bar. GM, are you ready? We're ready. Um, if there's one thing you do not need as a general manager is an apron. Get that off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you ready? Right, we're ready. Yeah. Yes. Let's, Let's go, guys. Go. Let's go. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? With extended front desk operating hours, guests can easily check in and feel welcome in the new lobby. Wow. Looks nice. I'll better be a comfortable sleep I tonight. I know, it's going to be fun. And they're enjoying the renovated and peaceful rooms. I wish this was my bedroom. <laughs> this is the uh, new Samarlo. And the wine tasting menu is a hit. That filet looks lovely. Oh, thank Guys, you. they're loving the food. Keep it going, thank yes? Thank you, Well done. Thank you, and good luck. When I first arrived, you saw three young guys sort of playing at running a bar and completely forgetting that they were actually in charge of a hotel. But Brian stepped up and has taken that general manager role, which is great news. I'm hoping now that they get that party mode out of their mind and focus on the potential of what this business can bring them. Uh, great job. Um, you performed like owners tonight. You sound like owners, and this place, you know, is rocking. The atmosphere in the bar is controlled. Is. The dining room's having fun, the patio's full, the wine tasting menu is flying out. Keep up the good work. Okay. Gordon, he really has opened my eyes and showed me that we need to take more of a leadership role as an owner. I'm taking you out of the employee of the month. I know. Choose one together. Yes, we yep. will. On a monthly basis, have your input. Yep. Throw it into the pot. I believe Gordon has saved his place by putting wind in our sails again. We truly did need a kick in the ass because we were playing around a little too much. General Manager, remember, actions speak I, I, louder I, I, than words. Your next day, you'll hear great things, I guarantee. Gordon is amazing. He's a magician, and I think that he came through and he transformed the hotel into this wonderful masterpiece, and I'm so thankful that he came through and helped us. What a gorgeous place. Damn. I never did 
did get to see Kevin lap dance. <laughs> Since my visit to the historic Murphy's Hotel, the owners have finally become owners. Joel is keeping the kitchen and the walk-in extra clean, and he has new pride in his work. I got a well done going right there. You can go peek at the upstairs bathrooms. One's down the hall, showers, both restrooms upstairs. You, you, st it. you stay there, I'm, I'm good right here. Okay. Brian is stepping up as general manager, focusing his efforts on the hotel. Brian is definitely capable of being the general manager. Gordon has completely changed everything. <laughs> Gordon brought the historic hotel back to life. Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm in Longview, Washington, trying to save one of the Pacific Northwest's precious gems, which has been shamefully neglected. Oh my gosh. The wealthy hotel owner has a drinking problem that is spiraling out of control. I want to see the hotel owner jailed. Philip was arrested for DUI. 50 devoted staff are desperate to save their jobs. We care about this place and we care about you. But a lot of us feel like you don't give a damn about us. You're calling your staff liars? Yeah, I would call them fucking liars. Can I get this hotel back on the wagon before it's too late? Longview, Washington, voted one of America's prettiest towns, is home to a Pacific Northwest jewel, the Monticello Hotel. Built in 1923, this historic building is currently celebrating its 90th anniversary. But unlike cheese and good wine, some things do not get better with age. Oh my gosh! I'm Philip Loving Foss, and I'm the owner of the Monticello Hotel. I've wanted to own the hotel since I was eight years old. My mother worked here when I was very young, and I remember all the cocktail waitresses and how beautiful they were, and wanted to be a part of it. Some might say the story of how Philip Lovingfoss obtained the hotel is almost too good to be true. Others might call it a fairy tale. Philip was a bartender here. He fell in love with the owner, Annabelle Jewell. I was in my early 30s when Annabelle and I first started going together, and she was in her mid-60s. They were married, and when Annabelle passed away, all of her assets were given to Philip. He inherited the Monticello Hotel. It's all pretty. With his inheritance, Philip has been living the good life with his girlfriend and general manager, Ginger, who is also 30 years his senior. DJ. But despite the owner's fabulous wealth, the staff are underpaid. I still make minimum wage, and I've been here 12 years. Yay, we're getting into that. Yeah. Philip flaunts his wealth in front of us. Don't flaunt it in our face when we're all wondering, do we put gas in the car or do we buy groceries? This is fucking unreal. He's probably got $150,000 worth of diamonds on his right arm, 10 karat diamond ring on his left finger. He walked through the kitchen one day and, and somebody broke a glass and he said, oh, did I lose a stone? I mean, really? How fucking arrogant. I want to say fuck you. <laughs> While Philip and Ginger have been enjoying their wealth, the hotel has been terribly neglected. Sarah Burns. Oh my gosh. Seriously? That is so gross. I'll go all the way down the hall around the corner. Inside the beautiful historic Monticello Hotel, there are only four suites, and then there are countless rooms stuffed with Philip and Ginger's crap instead of guests. With only four guest bedrooms available in the main hotel, most guests are unwittingly given rooms in the so-called North Wing, which is a characterless 1960s shoebox motel next door. I was hoping to stay in the hotel. I don't really even feel like staying here now. And having been ignored for years, the hotel is not generating any new business with a rapidly dwindling client base. Where's Mary? She's not here with us. This once glamorous hotel has major problems. But Philip's problem may be the biggest. It is no big secret that Philip drinks. Philip will come in here drunk. Good job, Jay, good job. In front of the, all the staff, and it's just an embarrassing mess. <laughs> and I think that Philip could die. He doesn't stop drinking. It scares me. The day before I arrived in Longview, things reached crisis point. I was pulled over, and they charged me with a DUI. I was uh, placed under arrest. 
They booked me in the Calix County Jail, and yesterday morning I was released. It's an unfortunate situation. Thank you. You guys have a good night. You too. This hotel, its staff, and the community deserve better. Phil? Talk about closing it. If Gordon isn't able to save this place for us, um, 50 people will be out of jobs, and Phil will be on his yacht in Seattle drunk. Hey, NASA! This place is a gem that needs to be preserved. It's the heart of Longview. This town needs the Monticello. Gorgeous. That place is massive. And look at all those rooms for guests. Finally, somewhere nice to stay. I feel sorry for the crappy motel next door. I'm amazed that place is still open, right next to a big hotel like that. My god. Wow, look at those beautiful cars. There must be a car show on. Oh, no. Somebody having a laugh? Hotel hell. Laddie's nine. Who the fuck can't spell? Part-time housekeeper. I can't think of anything worse to advertise on the outside of your hotel. Morning. Good morning. And first name is? Vanessa. Vanessa, yeah. nice to see you, nice. Gordon. I see you're having a classic car show today. No, those all belong to our owner, Philip. No, stop. They do. They belong to the owner? Yes, they do. What's with the plate? There's like Hotel Hell on one of the plates. Yes. But you did that for me? I'm not sure if you did it for you or for him. Wow. Uh, Jeff Daggy, Employer of the Month, 2010. You know it's 2013. I do, yes. Are the staff that bad that hasn't been <laughs> a more recent Employee of the Month? Last I heard, actually, he was in jail. <laughs> Holy crap. We have so many great employees. It's ridiculous that we're not recognized more than we are. Here's your card, Thank and you. here is your room code. You're in room 220. Uh, will you show me the way, or...? Oh, sure, if you'd like. Shall we? Please. If you follow me. I'll go that. We're going outside. Yes. OK. Just across here. So you have to go out to get back up again? Yes. And 220 right here. Um, but this is not the hotel. This is our North Wing Motel. And why in the fuck would I want to stay in here? All we have available to rent in the hotel are four suites. I'd rather stay in there next door okay. than in this dump. I'm sorry. People want to stay in the hotel. They don't want to stay in the cracker box. Driving up here, I didn't expect to be put in a motel. No, I understand, and I'm, I am sorry. All right, it's just right over here. Thank you. You're welcome. Bloody hell. That sofa's hideous. Who would use a fucking brown sofa like that? Oh, my God, it gets worse in here. This bed, is this anti? Uh, no. The rooms are furnished completely with stuff from Philip and Ginger's home. Oh, dear. Is this a mattress from their house? Yes. You bring a mattress from your house into your hotel? I wouldn't. They charge $250 a night for that mattress. I don't even know what to say about it. When they get new stuff, they bring old stuff here. There's some storage rooms that are full of old furniture. Where are the storage spaces? Where Just down the hall. Jeez. It's like a suite just yeah. full of crap. It's like a dumping ground. There's more, too. Wow, you are kidding me. I'm not. Oh, my god. Look at this. I wish this I was kidding you. It's like a hoarder. It's just junk everywhere. I don't understand a hotel owner that would dump half their shit in hotel rooms and not rent them out. Gordon was pretty appalled at the state of the storage rooms, how much crap there was in there. It's just a big fucking waste. Okay. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Wow, this place is so disappointing. The biggest highlight so far is the drive up. The minute you step inside, it's just bizarre. I can't wait to meet the owner and find out what the hell is going on in his head. I've just arrived at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington, and I'm shocked to discover that there are only four rooms for guests in this grand place, while others are being used for storage. Oh, my God. It's like a hoarder. It's just junk everywhere. I've got to meet the owner and the general manager and figure out what else is wrong with this place. Hello, of course. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Oh. Welcome to the Monticello Hotel. Thank you. What a gorgeous place from the outside. Gordon. Thank you. How are you? Good. So you're Ginger? Yes, this is my significant other. Hello. There you go. Is that true? That's true. Wow. Look at that bling. Can I have a quick look? It looks like a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> Too heavy for me. <laughs> um, I thought there was a car fair here. So someone told me they're yours. They're mine. Amazing. Let's go to the lounge. 
Did you always want to own a hotel? Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to own this hotel. Serious? And what's the building worth now? I think probably three and five million. It's extraordinary. I inherited it. All the estate? Yes. And if you don't mind me asking, what was that the tune of? Ten million. Wow. Is the hotel making money or losing money? It's losing money. I've been carrying it. How much are you losing? Thirty to thirty-five thousand a month. Oof. Lose it. This last. So four hundred grand a year. Mm. Yes. That's insane. There's lots of sleepless nights for me. How are we losing so much money? Being taken advantage of. I know that. Who's taking advantage? The kitchen staff for sure. They wait and read the clock. To think you're going to get paid for hours that you're not working? They can't do that to you. I think Gordon's going to have difficulties with my employees. I don't see them as team players at all. If this place was taken away, what would it mean to you? Devastating. It would be equivalent to a death. Oh, jeez. I started here in 1973. This has been a huge part of my life. Wow. Well, that's given me insight. Let me tell you. Um, Ginger, nice to see you, darling. Very nice. Likewise. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Excellent. You're welcome again.、Uh, thank you so much. It's terrible to hear that Philip and Ginger are being taken advantage of by their staff when they clearly care so much. I really hope I can help them sort their employers out. Oh, hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Debbie. Debbie Gordon. Nice to see. You. I have a table for you right over here. Now, how long have you been here? I have been here twelve years. Wow, seriously, twelve years. Yes.、Um, uh, right. What would you recommend? I recommend our crab and artichoke dip. Okay. Let's go for one of those. All right. Philips Triple Tower. Yes. What's that? It's a three-tiered tower of three different appetizers. And is his name big enough on the menu there? Obviously suffering from small man syndrome. Let's go for that. And then the butternut ravioli. Let's try that. All right. Thanks, Debbie. Nice to see. You. So the appetizers first, please. Okay. Well, I'm feeling really nervous about cooking for Gordon. They're all fucking froze together. Most of the food is prepackaged or canned or frozen because Ginger and Philip are running this place like real misers. They、uh, pinch a, a penny on every corner. This is our crab and artichoke dip. It's served with deep fried pita bread. And、um, is it fresh crab or canned? Frozen Chilean crab. Frozen Chilean crab. Correct. Jesus Christ! Fucking snot dip. I mean, it's like a dish ready for one of Philip's girlfriends. No teeth. Oh God. It's got that sour taste to it. I don't know what it is. No, Jesus. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. Ah. He felt it tasted sour. It always got that taste to me. I don't like it. You are kidding me. Off the tower.、Tea. This is the tower. This is the tower. Oh my God. Holy mackerel. So.、Uh... No, but it's like something you should have in your fucking garden, not in your restaurant. Are they shrimp? Are they fresh or are they frozen? They're frozen. They're frozen. Damn.、Mm. It's fucking disgusting. And what's in here? They're teriyaki beef tips. Jesus, that sauce is hideous. And that's just tough. Beef tips. It's like beef chew. And that middle one's another portion of snot dip. I skip that. Well, unfortunately for the chef, he doesn't get to dictate his own menu. What? The chef doesn't write his own menu. He does not. Let's move on, shall we? My God, careful. So Philip's dictating the menu. I suppose if his staff can't be trusted to clock in and out, they can't be trusted to choose the food. Feedback on that?、Um, the meat is too tough. The sauce tastes weird. He can tell it's not homemade. Is this Ramsey's? And it is. The meat is too tough. He's getting the full picture, and that's just what I wanted. Right. Feel very good about it. I am very disappointed with Dan's food. It's horrible. I just hope that Gordon sees the problems with the staff. Ravioli. I'm dreading bringing this dish out to him right now. The butternut ravioli. Thank you. Who made the、uh, raviolis? I don't know the name of the manufacturer. Manufacture. Correct. So the raviolis aren't even made either. They are not made here. Oh Jesus! They're packaged. That's dreadful. Like a mouthful of sugar every time. Oh dear. Thank you, Dan. Wow. Frozen crab, frozen shrimp, prepackaged ravioli. It's more like eating a badly run old folks' home than a decent restaurant. Obviously from a package. 
<laughs> we all knew that one was coming. I think there's a better way that our kitchen can function than it's functioning right now. I see just blatant neglect. Um, tell me about Philip's management style. Well, when he's sober, I get along with him just fine. When he's drinking, I avoid him at all costs. Does he drink a lot on he site? Does. Oh, he well. does. On a scale of one to ten, how bad is he drinking now? A ten. A ten. This week, he was arrested. For what? DUI. You are fucking kidding me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh my god, I want to see the hotel owner jailed. Jailed? He was you... kept overnight in jail. Bloody hell. Why would he not tell me that when it just happened hours ago? Phillips in denial. He doesn't take responsibility for his drinking problem. And I felt Gordon needed to know. Shit. The truth is starting to come out. Um, why don't you ask the chef to come out of the dining room? I'd like to meet him. And bring Philip and uh, Ginger as well. Thank you. He would like to see you all in the dining room. <sighs> I'm, I'm lost for words. Mm -hmm. Chef, that was dreadful. I don't think anything was fresh. It takes extra time to do things homemade. Uh, yeah, naturally. We're on a time restraint. What? Ask how many hours they get in a week or whatever, and they got to scrape for out. My, my prep cook gets 20 hours a week. That's not enough time to make fresh food. Is that why all the food's frozen? I mean, I get cut carrots or cut celery in the bag. I get the boiled eggs in a bag, done, peeled. You buy in boiled eggs? Yes. I played the safe card and purchased most of it prepared. You played the safe card? We can't even boil a fucking egg in here. Philip, if you care about quality, you need to pay people to prep fresh food, not buy it in. There were times uh, through January, February, where I'd have 12, 16 hours a week. A week? Yeah. How do you survive? Three hours a day? Not very well, but Do we you have a family? It. Yes, I do. Dan? Seven kids. This is insane. You can't run this hotel like a miser. If I sold fucking three of those cars and put it into the kitchen budget to function for the next 12 months, the chefs can do their job. And speaking of cars, why don't you tell me about this? I'm at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington. Oh my God, the Monticello Hotel owner jailed. Jailed? And I've just discovered that the hotel owner has a drinking problem so bad that just one day before I arrived, he was arrested for drunk driving. Can I have a word with the owner? Sure. Please? Yes. What is going on? Truthfully. I don't know, Gordon. Have you had a drink today? No. Yes, you have. Your staff tell me that you have a drinking problem. No. And yet you've just been busted for DUI. Ginger, does your boyfriend have a drinking problem? He does like his libations. I'm pissed off that you couldn't even say, hey, Gordon, can I have a word? Gordon, I, I fully intended on having a conversation You're splashed with you. all over the newspaper. I'm aware of that. Who owns this place? Me. So when are you going to step up? I'm here, Gordon. I'm engaged. If you can't be honest with yourself, you're fucked. The facts are starting to become clear. The problem here isn't the staff, it's the owner. You have um, room service. We do not. No room service in a hotel this size. That's not the only unpleasant surprise. Guests check in, and just like me, they think they're going to get a room in a historic gem. But instead, they're placed in the motel. This is insane. I don't think I can shower in this. I wonder if we can ask for a different room. This is awful. And a fettuccine Alfredo's ready. And during dinner service, most of the guests are over the age of 70. There clearly hasn't been any buzz about this place in decades. Yes, sir. That's not a prime room. Should be a little moister than that, isn't it? Well, I can go and I can go and check and see if there's another in-cut back there. Dan? Yeah. Do we have another in-cut? A moist one? Please be juicy. It is. Okay. Is Flint, do we do this? No. Why all of a sudden is he involved? 
Because I'm here. I'm sorry. Strawberry daiquiri? I can't believe Philip is put on a show for How me. Are you? Well, you, if you want to know the truth about a drinker, ask the bartender. Grant, that's what is going on tonight. It's like a comedy of errors here. You're welcome. Does Philip normally act tonight? No. No. What does Philip normally do at the hotel? He does drink quite a bit. Wow. And on average, a day, how many drinks would you make a day? During the day, sometimes four or five, and then it jumps into the evening. It could come up to uh, seven, eight. Jesus. I had him cut off of a new one. Oh, wow. Wow. No wonder things are on the slide with Philip drinking that much. I've got to get him to tell me the truth. This monstrous hotel has been running rudderless. There's no one at the helm. And you're pretending all of a sudden I'm busy and makes me time lifting because I'm here. I, I, I just... No, it's not because you're here. We don't normally do this stuff. This is what I normally do. You're calling your staff liars? I would say so. If they say that I'm not out here helping them every time I walk in this building, I would call them fucking liars. Come on. Be fucking honest with me. I am. Do you think I can just wave a fucking magic wand? No. When the place is running to the ground? With dinner service over, she says, I'm going to get Philip and his staff together so I can finally get to the truth. Is that normal, what I witnessed tonight? Is Philip always here? No. Does Philip always expedite the fucking hot plate? No. No. We need somebody to expedite. We're understaffed, and if we get busy, then we can't give good service, and those people will not come back. A person can't shortcut like no. that. No. Look because... at the size of this place. The business has been strangled. Yeah. It's been strangled by the owner. Why are we pretending? I'm doing a good job of pretending, then. This is what I do. Every time that you come in here, this is what you do. I do not run food down to your bar. For the last couple of nights? Let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? When Philip's drinking, he behaves one or two different ways. Mm -hmm. Either he's jovial and likes to giggle and have a good time, or if finances are in arrears, and we hear about how much everything costs you, and you were going to close the doors. It's stressful. It, it's not easy to come to work with someone threatening us all the time that the doors are going to be closed. Please don't look at me like that, Philip, because you do do this to us. That's bullshit. You Philip, need to hear the truth. You have told us over and over and over again that you're just going to shut I may the door. I may have said that twice. Twice, That's but to come in here true. regularly and say, That's I'm going to close true. the doors. If we keep lying about shit and we keep covering up shit and whatever, then he ain't going to fucking help us. And here we go like this, like we've been going for seven fucking years. He's, he's been known to walk behind the bar and fix himself drinks after the staff cuts him off. Philip? Yes. Is that true? That I don't know about. That I don't know about. I've gone behind the bar and made my own drinks, yes. So you're blacked out, you're that inebriated that you've got no fucking idea that you're that far gone? If he goes behind the bar, take the drink away from him, he cannot go Why back to the bar. Why is he in there in the first place? Work. Why is he even in that bar in the first place? Why does Why his is staff he have to Why? do that? To me, it's hypocritical. You put out memos saying that we can't drink in the bar. It's hypocritical, Philip, and we care about this place and we care about you. But a lot of us feel like you don't give a damn about us. Why are you coming in here to put your, your employees in a bad, uncomfortable situation? If it was up to me, I'd say, Philip, you can't drink in here. Because if something happens to you take out a family of four, they're coming after me and my family. And I don't have any money to, to afford a lawyer to keep me out of jail for the rest of my life. I'm at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington, where the staff are confronting the owner about his drinking problem. If it was up to me, I'd say, Philip, you can't drink in here. Because if something happens to you take out a family of four, they're coming after me and my family. And I don't have any money to, to afford a lawyer to keep me out of jail for the rest of my life. They are telling you the truth because they freaking care. Unfortunately, you're not telling the truth. And that's why this business is struggling. This ship is on a collision course. Can I show you something I think you should all see? Come with me. I think everybody's forgotten what it's like for guests to stay in this hotel. Dan, April. How much is this room? $250 a night, Friday and Saturday is $180 the rest of the week. Let me show you what $250 gets you at the Monticello. Let me turn the lights out. You see that? This black light shows up bodily fluids. 
That's, That's exactly disgusting. what you're saying. I wouldn't want to lay on that bed. Where do these mattresses come from, Philip? The house in Arizona. Your house? Yes. Wow. Those two holes there? That's cigarette holes. Uh-oh. Burns. Watch out. It's everywhere. There. Don't touch there. Oh, jeez. I was totally grossed out when I seen that bed. It was sickening. $250 to sleep in Phil. Oh, my God. Philip's semen right there. It is everywhere. <laughs> Does that make anybody else feel sick? Yeah. Because right now, I am fucking disgusted by this foul, polluted bed. I felt dirty. I'm a clean person. It was disgusting. I don't know why you're running a hotel. You're just ripping people off. You don't care for the customers. And you don't care for your staff. Who do you care for? I care about my staff. The first thing you said to me when I arrived here, Philip, what's the problem? Staff. They're bleeding the cloth. Huh. No way. That's what you told me. I've got half it written down at home where I put at least 100 hours free in here. We will come in an hour, two hours early, not punch in, and then we will work late to get what we need to get done. You have an estate to the tune of 10 fucking million dollars and a chef that puts 100 hours in for nothing. Or is he lying? He's not lying. He's here all the time. I'm surprised you guys are here. Oh. I'm the only earner for my family, and I make 500 bucks every two weeks. This is fucking crazy. And you rock up here with a plate with hotel help. What the fuck is going on? These guys are your bread and butter, your fucking backbone. But they're terrified to tell you the truth. You can't keep on cutting corners and humiliating them because they're the problem, the fact that it's not busy. Look within. It starts from the fucking top. Amen. Yeah. Could you just excuse me for leaving here on my own with Philip? Thank you. Now, can you fuck your man up? I don't have all the answers, Gordon. I'm trying. Give me one fucking answer. Give me something. You're abusing your staff. What kind of message does it send to them? when you fill the car park with classic cars, and they're fucking struggling. Do you think it's fair? Do I think it's fair? No. No. Do they deserve better? Of course. Why are you doing it? I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why I'm doing that. Get out, Philip. Leave me alone. Get the fuck out of here. Sleeping in a tub is bloody uncomfortable, but it certainly beats sleeping on that filthy mattress. The staff have been as honest as they can be, but they're all afraid of losing their jobs. Both of you, come with me, please. It's time Philip and Ginger heard from the people who aren't afraid to tell them the truth. Hey, good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming. Your guests are going to give you some honest feedback. That room was dirty. It looked like an animal was killed and drug out the room. Mm, I mean, the stain goes down the hall. There's no thought to the guest experience at all. Wow. You feel like you threw your money down the drain. I was so disappointed to know that I couldn't stay in a piece of history and got sent over to a motel. I was shocked at the decor that I saw. It was just hideous. It was brutal to hear that many guests complain about a one-night experience in the hotel. It actually scares you away when you see the marquee that says Thursday Laddie's Night and hiring part-time housekeeper. You don't want to advertise that you're short on housekeeping. Whose stupid idea was it to advertise for a part-time housekeeper? And I guess it's my idea. I'll take the responsibility well, Thank you. Can I ask you one question? Would you come back and stay here? Please raise your hands. No. Never. Never. I appreciate your honesty. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks. You heard what the guests had to say. Yeah, I did. Do me a favor. Spend a couple of minutes here looking at what you've inherited and ask yourself, do you really want it enough? Do you really care enough? Yes, I do care. I don't think you do. Oh. 
Owner Philip and general manager Ginger have just found out what the guests really think about the Monticello Hotel. Would you come back and stay here? No. Never. I think Ginger has finally realized how much Philip's drinking is hurting the hotel. And now she's asked to speak to me alone. It's been hard because it's deep. Well, His alcoholism is very deep. I can see it's been hard. And I've reached out to my children, and they've all talked to him. But it hasn't been any good. And it's getting worse. The yeah. stress on my end has been, where's he at? Is he driving? Is he going to kill somebody? Is he going to kill himself? I just wish you'd told me the truth, that's all. I am a private person, and this has been very hard. And it's hard to see someone destroy themselves. I don't even think he realizes how bad it is. It's been a very heavy burden on me. He's very ill. It's a terrible disease. He's an ill man, and you're suffering the consequences. He needs help. And that's the truth. I'm going to persuade him to get treatment. Oh God, would you do that for me? I will do that. I want this place to work. OK? Thank you. OK. And I'm sorry. I'm going to need the staff's help to get through to Philip. Come through, guys. Maybe together we can break through his denial. I'm going to get Philip in now. And I need you to get behind agreeing that he needs help. No, it's hard, but you're part of this change. And you stand up for what you feel is right. The staff needs him to show us that he's willing to make a change. I think he needs to become honest with himself. This hotel is a breaking point. And you need help. Is there anyone else in this room that thinks that Philip needs help? with his addiction. Please raise your hand. They're all here because each and every one of them care, not just about the hotel, but about you. Ginger, you know how bad the drinking problem is. Yes, I do. <clears throat> I pour out bottles. I empty them out down the sink because I love him, and I hate to see him destroy himself. And that's what it's been like. It's been very hard. If you could see it through our eyes, it's like night and day. You're During the day, you just, you're amazing, Philip. You talk to us with so much respect and stuff like that. And as soon as you start drinking, you can see that huge difference come over you. It's like a black cloud. We really care about you, Philip. I mean, we're afraid for you because your rock bottom isn't going to be like most because you have the money to pay way out, you have the money to do what you do. Your rock bottom is going to be very serious. It's either going to kill you or kill somebody else. And I don't want to see you die, and I don't want to see you in trouble and hurt somebody. You're very important. You're worth getting clean. You're so worth it. OK. Philip, will you get help? You cannot keep on hiding this. I don't know what you want me to say, Gordon. What about what you want to say? I'm not saying anything. We're done. If the entire staff can't get through to Philip, maybe speaking to him alone will help change his mind. He's got to get help, otherwise this place doesn't stand a chance. When are you going to snap inside and say, fuck? I'm hitting rock bottom. I've been in this position for the past several years. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't get upset. Huh? Don't get upset. It's all part of it. So what do you want to do, Philip? Are you ready to get help? Please. I promise you, I'm definitely going. For my family, for my staff, I'm going into treatment. Appreciate that. Come here. It's time. Some things in life are more important than business, and I'm glad Philip has realized he has to put his health first and sort out his problems. Coming up, welcome to the new and improved Monticello Hotel. <laughs> Change is in the air at the Monticello Hotel, so overnight, my design team gave the hotel the makeover it truly deserves. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the new and improved Monticello Hotel. Before we go inside, 
I want you to notice something. That dreadful motel sign has disappeared. <laughs> when people want to make a booking, you can offer them a choice of the modern annex or the historic hotel. And that will be a lot easier because I've opened up four new suites for guests, wow. doubling the number of rooms in this historic hotel. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Let's Come on in. Woo! I have butterflies. I am so excited to walk in that hotel. Come on, jump in, ladies. Boy, oh boy, Welcome oh to your new suite. Isn't it beautiful? Wow. I love it. Oh, my God. This is a beautiful room. It should be used for guests, not storage. Never in my wildest dreams did I think our storage unit could end up looking like this. Are you ready to see the bedroom? That's so cool. I don't, I don't even have words. Gone is all that secondhand furniture replaced by a comfortable bed with luxurious linens. Now we have something to be proud of. I mean, the place is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning new furniture. Beautiful linens and beds for all your suites. Very classy. It's mind-blowing. What Gordon has done is just phenomenal. What do you think? I think that this is a room that I can be proud to send my guests to. Oh, my goodness me. Wonderful. Of course. They're never going to want to leave. No. <laughs> no. I'd like to show you my room. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh my God. This is amazing. For me, the stunning interior it's matches beautiful. the majestic exterior. Now, you look on the outside, you think this is exactly the kind of feel you want inside. A quick look at the bedroom. Oh, the this one you're going to love. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And the bed. As you know, with the mattress full of stains. Now, look, that beautiful bed. That's what you call a proper king-size bed. Oh, wow. It was our best room before, and now it's the best room in town. <laughs> it's beautiful. Come through, guys. The potential here it's phenomenal. It's the heart of the town again. And something to be proud of. Oh, excuse me. Welcome to Monticello. Stunning oh. new room service. Oh. oh. Wow. How can a hotel of this standard not have a small dynamic room service menu? Increases the turnover, on average check, but more importantly, guests stay actually longer if they know the food's that good in the room as well. Now, get yourselves a plate and start tasting. Oh, wow. This is so good. Mm. Those are gratin potatoes. Oh, I know. Yeah. There's nothing like fresh salmon. That food was amazing. I can't recall the last time I've tasted food so fresh. I think it's going to be a real bonus. Enjoy the rest of the food. We've got a big, big night ahead of us. It's a really nice menu. I think it's going to bring the revenue higher. This is exactly, exactly what we needed. This is sensational. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beyond. It's not just room service. I reinvented the menu for the restaurant too, using the best local ingredients. I'm confident the combination of great food and great rooms will encourage a whole new generation to come here. That's getting medium in there. It needs about another minute or two, then we'll pump that one out, okay? The difference between the frozen and the food we're getting now, night and day. There is, it's indescribable for the taste, the presentation. It's awesome. Keep cooking with fresh ingredients. I will, okay. And remember this. The day a kitchen can't be bothered to boil a fucking egg, yeah, get out of there. Okay, you're better than that. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Are you checking in? Yes. Yeah. Oh, can I get your name? Uh, Sorrel. Ah, oh, you're staying in one of our new suites. I can't wait for people to see these rooms. Oh, wow. And I'm ecstatic. I'm going to have to send so many less guests out to the motel. This is what I had hoped for. Although the guests are delighted with the changes, it looks like Chef Dan has a problem. Quick word. What's wrong? Oh, no, you're leaving. The Monticello's relaunch is going brilliantly. Nice to see you. Gordon. You OK? Yeah. But Chef Dan has just pulled me aside. No, let's go here. Take a seat. What's the matter? Nine years clean and sober. Wow. That's phenomenal. Well done. So I would love to be a sponsor, Philip sponsor. If he would have me be a sponsor once he gets out, he's going to need somebody by his side. That's an amazing commitment. Mm -hmm. It's a real big responsibility to be a Phil's sponsor, but it's one I'm, I'm willing to take on, get our owner on the right track. Yeah, good job. Thank you. It's going to be a challenging journey for Philip, but with all the support he has from Ginger and his staff, I'm hoping he'll be able to stay away from alcohol. So, mm -hmm. when you get out of treatment, you're going to need a sponsor. Somebody take your meetings. So nine years, clean us over. If you want, I offer. Thank you, Dan. All right. I appreciate that. Sound good? It does. Now with new life breathed into the Monticello, 
it's time for me to go. Both of you, take care of yourselves, OK? Good luck. Thank you, sir. Uh, Seriously, good luck. Oh, dear. Next time I see you, give me a change, man. Oh, yes, I will. One more thing before I go. Okay. What makes this place very special is not just it's a historic building in its 90th year. For me, it's the staff. So, just so you don't forget it, here we are, a new plaque. Wonderful. And the employers of the month, this month, are the entire staff. And you need to do more than just recognize how good they are. You need to pay them properly. Yep. Ramsey did a wonderful job. The hotel is flowing in the right direction because they do have a good crew to turn the ship back around and make it thrive. And I'm going to seek help for my drinking. Thank, Thank you, you, Gordon. Wow, what a place. I really hope Philip keeps his promises. Time will tell. Since my visit to the Monticello Hotel, bookings have gone up. This is really nice. <laughs> and with all the new revenue coming in, the staff are working with a new sense of enthusiasm because Philip is finally paying them properly for all the hours they've put in. Gordon, I want to thank you for what you did. You saved 50 people's jobs and their livelihoods and their families. And Philip is booked into a treatment program which starts next week. All I can say for Gordon is God bless you and thank you.